Consumer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Gold mining major Goldfields has reinforced its rebase plan for its South Deep Mine, with renewed focus being put into safety, production and mechanization. Dylan Slater tells us more. The South Deep Mine, at a current depth of 2.9 kilometers, poses unique and somewhat unprecedented challenges, thereby allowing Goldfields to forge the way in terms of deep level mining in the west of Gauteng. At such depths, safety related to seismic activity is an issue, which is exasperated in the western area in Coltonville region, which was, and currently is, a gold mining hotspot with an extensive network of operational and abandoned underground workings. The vast number and subsequent volume of such underground voids leads to an increasing number of seismic events. To reduce the number and impact of seismicity in the South Deep Mine, Goldfields is using a de-stressing mining method, coupled with an updated pillar design methods of which are significantly reducing the number of seismic events, thereby mitigating risk to underground operations and improving personal safety. South Deep Vice President Adrian de Beer explains further. By converting from the low profile to the high profile stoping, we've introduced much bigger pillars. And the pillars, the importance of the pillars is, because it's a lot more rigid, it can contain the, the seismicity levels. But the important thing is, is that there is a specific threshold. And you must be very careful of this threshold. The balancing point where either the pillar is going to burst on you or the pillar is going to, is going to crush. So that's a one reason. The second reason is that we're understanding a lot better what is required in terms of our preconditioning that's so much required to de-stress the conditions of the faces in front of us, especially when it comes to specific uh, geological discontinuities. And then thirdly, is by making sure that we do comply with our specific layouts, mining layouts, making sure that our leads and lags do comply and, and that we stay within the parameters that we set for ourselves. Goldfields has also outlined a more robust long-term plan, paving the way with a gradual but steady ramp up in production, thereby homing in on refined profit margins and ensuring South Deep can be mined for longer at greater efficiency. A major cornerstone in this plan to boost life of mine is Goldfield's target of steadily ramping down production of its so-called current mine and the north of Wrench mining area. Both of these areas are situated north of the Wrench fault line and will, after 2052, be completely obsolete in terms of production. Starting in about 2030, the first of the new mining area will begin a rapid ramp up in production. This new area comprises two mining areas south of the Wrench fault the south of Wrench West and the south of Wrench East. Over time, the south of Wrench West will become the major mining area for South Deep. It is envisaged that this area will result in the production of more than 20 tonnes of gold a year and will eventually take sole gold production towards 2094. The absolute plan is to start with south of Wrench during 2024 and it will peak during 2031 and that's how we're going to face in south of Range. The intention absolutely is to, to get as much out, out, out of north of Range for the next 10 years and then south of Range will take over from, from uh, north of Range. South Deep has also reinvented itself in the deep level mechanised arena with the building of an extensive underground maintenance, repair and rebuilding facility to service the bulk of its fleet. This workshop has the capacity to conduct scheduled servicing of fleet engines and equipment. It also extends to washing, dismantling and stripping of machinery. Overhauling procedures including sandblasting, welding, reassembly and respraying of machinery will also be done in this workshop. Complete overhauling will be assisted using overhead cranes and below vehicle pits for inspection, all of which is supported by an underground parts department which is stocked with about 40 million rand worth of high demand parts, including hydraulics, prop shafts, differentials and service sundries. Adrian explains more about how the workshop impacts economics at South Deep. How does the, the, the new workshop improve economics? Certainly, we are now in a process that we can do some of the rebuild of, of certain machines ourselves, and that will extend the life of that machine, and thus we don't have to bring in new pieces of equipment on the mine. Secondly, by maintaining these pieces of equipment properly, you can definitely extend the life of that machine. And that has got a huge contribution towards our productivity levels. South Deep is also ramping up its use of backfill as mining progresses. The backfill is it's quite a story. First we had to go and look at the quality, we had to look at the infrastructure, we had to understand what is the type of backfill that we require. We've got two types of backfill, classified tailings and full plant tailings. 
and the full plant tailings we can get 70% back from the product that we are milling, whereas for the classified tailings we can only get 40% back. So through the processes we've managed now to install a lot of the capacity that was required in terms of infrastructure for the full plant tailings. And secondly, there's a lot of work that's happened around the barricade type specifically, which was part of the constraint that we had previously with, with placing the backfill. So there's a lot of good progress. We, we haven't won the war yet. And through this year, there's more processes that will be entrenched by the introducing a mechanized backfill method. SASD plans to focus on increasing production this year, as well as enhancing safety at the mine. Adrian runs us through the short-term goals for the remainder of the year. We've set certain milestones for ourselves this year, obviously. We've had a very tough start to the year. Um, and uh, I don't see, uh, at this point in time, it's very tough for me and difficult for me to say whether we're going to change the milestones. Um, obviously, the idea is to try and achieve the milestones for the year. Other news making headlines this week. South African in the Mars mix as race to the red planet heats up. The next space race has started with the launch of the largest ever interplanetary space rocket and spaceship carrying four carefully selected astronauts on a mission to establish a human settlement on Mars, a planet that is about 225 million kilometers away. So I've always dreamed of being an astronaut since I was a young child. And the moment when I read about the call for volunteers to move to Mars on a one-way trip with the Mars One project was really a life-changing moment. I made the decision instantaneously my heart was beating, my mouth went dry, and in that moment I made peace with the, the fact that I might not ever return to Earth and that I would do everything in my power to live out the rest of my days on planet Mars. We are hoping that the selection will be at some stage next year. Um, so I'm preparing by, I've gone on a 10-day silent retreat to see how I deal with being alone. As expected, I loved it. <laughs> I was actually keen to continue in silence after it ended. I ran the, the ultra marathon the Two Oceans Ultra Marathon this year in Cape Town, beautiful race. Uh, never have run that long before, but uh, survived, so that was good. And my research is increasingly looking for the evidence of the building blocks of life that are being detected in comets, meteorites, and also in interstellar clouds in space. Um, and in a sense, moving to Mars would be an ideal opportunity to be on the ground looking for the same kinds of evidence of the precursors of life or life itself, um, which I'm currently doing from, from Earth. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.